Good evening. And welcome to everyone who's joining us on the internet. Before we begin, let's take a few moments to be quiet together. Okay. It has been rightly said that mind is its own great cause and effect. I don't particularly like that choice of words <coughs> because of the, um, the meaning given to the word effect. Effect is usually thought of as something separate and apart from the cause. And that does not express a unity. We are going to be talking about unity tonight because unity is simplicity. Being, being a unity is simple. Duplicity is not. And so, I prefer these words. Mind is its own great cause and event. In other words, mind being cause, giving rise to creation, is an event itself. It is the event itself. Mind and its movement are one and the same. Creation is not separate from the mind of God. Creation is not separate from God. Mind is its own great cause and event. Now, we've said before that you and your Father are one, and that one is the Father. Listen again. You and your Father are one, and that one is your Father. We can also say, your will and the Father's will are one, and that one will is the Father's. You see, this is where the singularity is, this is where the simplicity is. You cannot say, you and your Father are one, and you are that one. That idea 
is the definition of the orphan, the independent one, self-authorized, being an authorizer on its own. No. You and your father are one, and the father is that one. Now, I'm not playing with words here. We've been talking about the holy instant. And the fact that the holy instant is the result of what? Of doing the two-step. And what is the two-step? The two-step is you hesitating, you abandoning your independent, self-creative thinking. And in the silence that occurs, in the absence of your thinking, you reach out and say, Father, what is the meaning here? Father, what is the truth here? You see? You abandon the creative one that you have thought you were in favor of connecting with your source, which constitutes the whole of you. The simplicity of this lies in the fact that when you do this, you yield to something other than yourself. You yield to something other than who and what you have thought you were. Now, it is reported that in the Garden of Gethsemane, I said, um, in a moment of weakness, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. But nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. This is a perfect example of the two-step. And for that reason I share it, even though it is not a phrase that ever was uttered from my lips. All of you approach the Father with prayers, with requests for this, that, or the other thing that you feel is exactly what you need and which you are sure you need. But if you practice the two-step, you abandon that request and you say, Nevertheless, Father, thy will, not mine, be done. Father, what is the truth here? Father, what do I need to know? You see? The reason this is so important is because law, a cause does not lie in the realm of effects. Cause does not lie in the realm of what you call manifestations. Let me give you an example of what I mean here. And I'm not sharing this as a definition of dreams, but rather to illustrate a meaning. You're asleep. It's early in the morning. One of the children has a need, gets up, and knocks on your door. You, lying in bed, are having a dream. And in the dream, you're at work. And in the middle of your busyness, you hear a knock at the door. Well, the dream goes on. But the point is that the cause of your hearing a knock on the door in your dream is not because it was happening there, but we will say at a different level of conscious awareness. It's occurring in the room where you're sleeping. You see? Cause does not lie at the level of effect. 
This is important. Another example. Independent agents. We've discussed your being an orphan. You're behaving as though you are fatherless, motherless, and you are an independent entity in your own right. Now, because mind is its own great cause and event, whatever you're experiencing as an orphan is not an experience arising out of orphanage. I said, and I said truly, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. Every one of these mansions, you could say, is a vantage point, an infinite vantage point, a vantage point from which all of creation is experienced by you. And you, and you, and you. You see? But those mansions to the independent entity, the one caught up in a belief about himself as being fatherless, motherless, and having this wonderfully exciting and fearful experience of of accomplishing things all by itself, experiences these mansions as dormitories in an orphanage. Mind you, because mind is its own great cause and event, and there is not anything separate from it, what's experienced in the orphanage as an orphanage has to be the kingdom of heaven and Our Father's mansions, of which there are many, infinity of them, you see? Whatever you're experiencing that is not a true experience is not a separate experience. It's not an experience separate from reality. It's just a biased experience of what is real. Now, if you are in bed asleep and your son has knocked on the door because there's a need and you dreamed that somebody was knocking at your door in your office, you're not going to be able to respond appropriately if you go to your office door. Somewhere, a shift of attention has to occur from your misperception to the reality. You see? so that you might wake up, get out of bed, go to the door, and uh, help your son. Now, you all have what are at least two experiences of being conscious. One is what you would call your waking consciousness. Every day when you get up, take care of your affairs, Live your life, respond to things that need to be done, which you are in charge of. And the other is what you experience when you fall asleep at night. And you're not aware that you're in charge of anything, and what you're experiencing is not a connection with reality at all. You understand that things that happen in the reality of your bedroom or your chair where you have fallen asleep will be translated into events in your dream. Therefore, they are not occurring at the level of the dream and they cannot be responded to at the level of the dream. Now, when you do the two-step, What you are doing is shutting up the conscious thinking activity during your day when you say you are awake. You're abandoning authority you believe you have as an independent entity in a godless world. 
and you reach out for your source. You reach out for that which knows the truth. You reach out for that mind which is its own great cause and event which is inseparable from your mind. You and your Father are one, and the Father is that one. Your mind and the Father's mind are one, and that mind is the Father's mind. You see, what you're doing when you do the two-step is you're shifting from a dream that you call being awake, which amounts to distorted perceptions of reality, so that you might join with the source, the movement of creation that is its own great cause and event, so that you might experience and respond to everything from the place where God is being it, and from the place where it is not your bir not only your birthright but your function to experience truly. Now, not all of what I'm saying right now is new. And we're still talking about the two-step. We're still talking about the holy instant. But we're embellishing it and giving it broader and deeper meaning. Now, we've talked before about the fact that when you do the two-step and employ the holy instant, you move into that place where God's laws prevail. Now, what does that mean? It means you moved into that place where the will of God is done. where the will, where God's will is done. Now, that might not even seem radical to you or exceptional, but if you stop and think about it, if you do the two-step and you move into the holy instant and you are where God's will is done, you're going to have an experience that absolutely reflects God's will, not yours, not the one you thought you have had as an orphan. And you're going to what? You're going to have you're going to start having a new experience, a transformed experience, one which you're not responsible for because you've abandoned your so-called authority to be a cause in your own right. And so, when you move into this place where God's laws prevail and therefore God's will is done, you're going to begin to have a transformed experience of dormitories in a in an orphanage, and you're going to begin to experience what they truly are. The mansions, the many mansions. You see? You're going to begin to experience everything that you had misperceptions of and whose purposes were something you had determined through your imagination as what God is being them as. Not good English. You will begin to experience them with the purpose God has placed in them as part of the movement of creation that is its own great cause and event. In effect, what I'm saying is that it will feel like something other than you has taken over. And it will be God. And it will constitute a transformed experience. In practical living 
daily terms in your life. Now, Paul and Susan have been having this experience for the last four or five months as this movement regarding a new residence and a new place from which to engage in the work has unfolded. It is as though things were taken out of their hands. A movement began which they didn't ask for and which they have had to, I'm going to say, yield to. Because they had different preferences. They wanted to stay cozy and simple and with that which was familiar, even though God's fulfillment of purpose was different from that. And so incredible things have happened, not at their hand, things that do not seem reasonable, they, they can't be justified in any human sense, and it's not clear to them what the divine event is yet. And this is what everyone has in store for them as they begin to do the two-step and practice the holy instant. I bring this out because it's a promise of fulfillment that lies within you in your decision to abandon your thinking and yield into the Father with a genuine curiosity to know what the truth is beyond your current definition of it. You will find that as this movement that goes beyond your concepts of reasonability occur, as wonderful as they are, you will begin to feel uncomfortable because you're not in charge of them and your conditioning is to believe that you are supposed to be and therefore you're being negligent and therefore the potential to be guilty of making a mistake arises in you. And what does that do? It spoils the movement of God that is occurring in you, in your experience, because you have said, you want to wake up. You have said, I want to do the two-step. I want to practice the holy instant. I want to be in that place where God's laws are prevailing, which means I want to be in that place where God's will is done. Not will be done, not was done, but is done is done, is done, is done. You see? Moment by moment, moment after moment. Now, when this uncomfortableness and threat of guilt begins to consume you, you revert to your old habit of thinking. You do what will bring things back into balance as far as you're concerned, as far as your belief is concerned. And the moment you begin thinking, you have abandoned your connection with reality. You have withdrawn your attention from the bedroom where you are sleeping and your son has knocked on the door and you have reverted to the office you are dreaming you are in and you are answering the door with the intent to respond well there. And you see, there you're not coping with anything actual at all and anything that occurs there does not accomplish anything relative to your son in your real life who's knocking at your door with a need at four in the morning. You see? And you want to be responding to the reality and not to an imagination where nothing is actually happening at all. Now, 
I am using the word dream carefully here because in effect what you call your daily waking life is dream-like at least because it's full of misperceptions which you are believing wholeheartedly and according to which you are governing your actions. That is the equivalent of answering the door in your office and attending to whoever's out there and doing it well in your dream. Nothing is actually happening. But what you are confronted by and what you are having to deal with is the kingdom of heaven. Instead of a dormitory, it is one of the Father's many mansions. It is that which is happening at the level of God. It is that which is happening at the level of mind being its own great cause and event. It's you shifting to the place where the Father's will registers with you as yours and you are not at all confused because you know it's your father's. You know that it has the depth and breadth and scope of the power, the almighty power of God. And you are very comfortable abiding in that conscious experience, embracing that conscious experience as yours because you are experiencing it and making commitment to it because you have no desire to engage in any other act of independence. Now, my point is this, the one I want to convey. And it's actually a simple point. There's only one thing going on. It's the kingdom of heaven, as I've been saying for years. Which you are either seeing clearly or through a glass darkly. When you're seeing it through a glass darkly, you are believing what isn't true. And you are suffering from your ignorance of what truth is. And yet, the truth is about the very things you are having misunderstandings. Reality, creation, God's presence. And so if you want to experience them, if you want to lose the confusion and the suffering from the confusion you're working under, you must be willing to bring your attention, I'm going to say, to the bedroom where your son is knocking at the door, to that place where God is being all, where God's laws prevail, where God's will is done. Because that's where the spark, that's where the light will go on, that's where the clarity will come that tells you what the events really are, what creation really is, so that you might respond to it with the fullness of appreciation and awe for what it is. Be renewed by the transforming of your minds be renewed by the transforming of your minds. It's accomplished through the two-step and the holy instant. It's the effect of abiding in the holy instant and inviting God's perception. Inviting the experience of your mind and God's mind being one, and that one is God's. It's time for transformation. It's time for a transformed experience of everything you're experiencing. 
but you're going to have to stop trying to deal with it from here. You're going to have to stop trying to deal from it from the level of your best definitions of it. Everything that you're experiencing is going on in a different way from the way you're interpreting it. As a result, you bump into it. You're awkward with it. You, you behave in a way inconsistent with it because you're responding to your definitions of it. You deserve to have fulfillment registering with you in every aspect of your days. That's your birthright and that's the point of everything we're talking about. And so again, mind is its own great cause and event. You and your Father are one and the Father is that one. Your will and the Father's will are one and the Father's will is that one. Reality is going on in reality, not in your misunderstandings of reality. But you're having your misunderstandings of reality in the middle of reality and about all of the aspects of reality. The singularity is present. What you want is to experience the singularity as singular. Simple. Undeniably fulfilling. As you go through your day, let, let your desire be to experience the fullness of what God is being and meaning in each and everything you're confronted with. Don't seek it in your perception of it at the moment. Ask. You might say, you might say, put a periscope up from where you are into the kingdom of heaven. <laughs> right here where you are. So that someone with clarity can reveal to you what the truth is of this place where you are. And your mind can be transformed so that you see everything as the fulfillment it is. As you start having these fulfilling experiences, your friends and acquaintances might begin to question what is happening with you. Thank God. Because they're noticing something that needs to be noticed so that they begin to bring their curiosity into play relative to their experience. You see? Now, the movement continues with Paul and Sue and the move. And the movement continues with everyone who has been participating and those who haven't. And the blessings of it will continue. The meaning of the movement will make itself clear to everyone as everyone abides with it without attempting to bring their best definitions to it. Quit trying to figure it out. You hear? Quit trying to figure it out and ask, Father, where is the meaning here? What is the meaning here? And then shut up and listen. So that the movement of fulfillment can register with you. And so that everything you do identifies fulfillment and becomes like a chain reaction, like dominoes falling, affecting those you know. Again, 
when you ask of the Father what is the truth here, and you genuinely become silent, and you listen attentively, you will be given the answer. And what I mean to convey tonight is that it won't come purely as an intellectual answer. It will come as a wave of movement that is constituted of changes in your life that identify good beyond your capacity to create it on your own. It's that simple. And that's the thought I want to leave you with tonight so that you may abide with it. Let it be with you. Let it inspire your attention. Remember, you think you're living in a material world and universe. But you know what? It's really the kingdom of heaven. What's happening in the material world and universe is not originating in the material world and universe. It's originating in the kingdom of heaven as the kingdom of heaven, no matter how you're misinterpreting it. And all you want to do is abandon the misinterpretation and the faith you have in your misinterpretations. That's going to constitute the transforming of your mind. It's a wholeness. It's a oneness. It's a singularity. As you let God be all there is to you. I love you all. And I look forward to being with you next week.